So it's been 60 years since the historic March on Washington, which saw a quarter of a million people walk the National Mall in one of the most notable turning points in the civil rights movement. And today, that call to action is being continued. Civil rights leaders and hundreds of community groups are rallying in the same location where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his iconic I Have a Dream speech. Organizers have noted that today's event will address a range of issues, including threats to democracy, criminal justice reform, and voting rights. Joining me now, Martin Luther King III, Andrea King, and Yolanda King, activists and family of the late civil rights icon, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. It's an honor and a pleasure to welcome all of you this morning. Martin, I'd like to start with you. In your father's I Have a Dream speech, he said that he dreamed of the day that his children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. 60 years later, we're here. Do you think that that is the reality for black Americans in our country? No, I do not think that uh, that day has arrived yet, tragically. Uh, we should be further than where we are in our nation around a range of issues, certainly from income and inequality, where black families, uh, well, white families in America have over $175,000 saved up. Black families have less than 10000 That's just one of many metrics where we must work to realize the dream. Andrea, the Voting Rights Act of 1965 was such a major victory for the civil rights movement, but in the years since it was signed into law, that legislation has been gutted. So how has the fight for voting rights changed in the 60 years since that march on Washington? You know, I can't help but reflect on your first question when you talked about the part of Dr. King's speech when he talked about his four little children. Mm. Because our daughter who joins us today, Yolanda Renee King, is the only grandchild of Martin Luther King Jr. and Greta Scott King. And at 15 years old, she has progressively lost rights since the day that she was born. She was born in 2008, and that started in 2013 with the Voting Rights Act, the crown jewel of the civil rights movement being totally decimated. And what we have seen since that time is rampant um, legislation being pushed through all over the country, making it harder, not easier, for people to vote. We are seeing laws that are being passed that are, um, instead of lifting people up, are trying to limit our um, hard-won um, rights. Yolanda, at 15, I know that you've seen this happening. Not only have voting rights been challenged, but so has the teaching of black history. What do you make of states like Florida attempting to whitewash black history? Well, I think that we're in a very keen time in history right now. And I think that we also need to go back to what happened in 2020. We saw that there was there was a lot of people showed up to vote and numbers that we had never seen. And as a result, there was a pushback. And if you look at times before that, whenever there is some sort of action that occurs, there's always a pushback. And I think that we need to acknowledge that because I know that during this time, it is so easy to feel discouraged. And But now we have to keep going because it determines the path that this country will take. Martin, organizers of today's event have made it a point to call the 60th anniversary a continuation of the fight for civil rights, not a commemoration. So how urgent are the issues that are facing all Americans today? Well, the issues are so uh, challenging, I should mm -hmm. say. Um, We've never seen. My dad and mom talked about eradicating the triple evils of poverty, racism, and violence. When we look at poverty numbers, they are higher than they should be in this great country. If we look at racism, it is at an all-time high. Racism against everybody, racism around black folk, around Jewish people, around Islamic people, around uh, Asian people, and even around Native Americans. This is a better nation than the behavior we're exhibiting. First First of all, we had to figure out how do we come together? How do we bring civility back to the political discourse? We used to be able to disagree without being disagreeable, which is what my father and mother taught. But now we're at an 
all-time high. We must ultimately, my dad would say, learn how to live together as brothers or we might perish as fools. While one does not want to see that, it is up to us to come together. And that's why we have such a broad coalition uh, from labor, from the African-American community, from um, the Jewish community, from the LGBTQIA community, uh, from the Asian community, from the indigenous community. And we're coming together to say, we must create the climate for America to move forward in a forward direction, not a backward direction. Andrea, your husband Martin talks about that diverse coalition of multicultural groups from LGBTQ community to immigrant groups to the AAPI community. What are those honest conversations that are taking place to create the tie that binds these groups so that we can get the strongest coalition in that fight for equality? Well, I have to say that on January 6, 2021, this nation witnessed an insurrection. Today, on August 26, 2023, we're seeing a resurrection, a resurrection of democracy, a resurrection of, of us standing together and coming together. You're going to see today the, ga the great tapestry of diversity in this country. We were intentional in all of the organizers and um, Drum Major Institute, NAN, ADL, to making, to ensuring that we have everybody represented here. We're seeing the best of who we are today, 200 plus groups. You're seeing all communities standing together, all generations standing together. Yolanda, you're still too young to vote, but you're already so involved in the civil rights fight. What do you say to your peers who may not be of age to vote, but they want to make an impact just like you? Well, I would like to acknowledge that even though I'm not able to vote, there are ways that we can support those around us to vote. I mean, um, a lot of us have older siblings who are old enough to vote, and so encouraging them to vote, or even family friends, or parents, or aunts and uncles and cousins, and just encouraging the people around us who are old enough to vote to vote, because voting is really one of the, it should be the fun, one of the most fundamental rights that we should have and uh, as well it is one of the most important things that someone can do to contribute to this country because it really determines the path that we're taking i mean i believe that there are so many great politicians who have ideas to really resolve these problems and are and are worth hearing and so i think that by voting then we can really hear their ideas and we can really see um, these issues that we've been talking about for so long getting resolved and as for young people getting involved there are so many ways you can get involved i mean just encouraging the people around you to vote then you don't necessarily have to be a, a public speaker to make an impact and to take action you can start clubs at your school you can um you can start a social media page you can follow people who talk about important issues or you can use you can organize your community to do something. You can organize your sports team to do something. You can um, make something regarding, um, relating to these issues by using art. I mean, a lot of people don't really realize this, but art had a huge impact and had a huge presence in the civil rights movement. And so I think it's important to acknowledge that there were so many other outlets that people made an impact. Yolanda King, wise beyond your years. Martin Luther King III, Andrea King, and Yolanda King. You all give us hope and inspiration that the future will be good. I thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.